Hi, in this video, I'd like to show you a little work with scale factors here. So we're going to use a scale factor to determine the new side length in this triangle. Um, so we're starting with a larger triangle, triangle A, where I'm told what all the side lengths are. We're going to a smaller triangle where we're not told any of the side lengths, and we're specifically asked what is the side length of this side here, side that's marked with X. It says that it, the triangle A is dilated with a scale factor of 0.7 to create triangle B. So first of all, dilated. What does it mean to dilate something? What is a dilation? A dilation is a type of geometric transformation that changes the size of an object. So in this case, yeah, the triangle is shrinking in this case, but uh, it says all parts of the triangle will either shrink or grow by the same scale factor. So dilations can sometimes cause it to shrink as in this case, or to grow. But everything needs to grow or shrink by the same scale factor. And what does the scale factor mean? So the scale factor is what you're multiplying by. If the scale factor is 1, the shape is going to stay the same size. Multiplying something by 1 doesn't change the quantity of that number. So if the scale factor is 1, that's kind of a boring dilation. Uh, the shape will stay the same size. If the scale factor is greater than 1, when you multiply by a number greater than 1, the answer grows, the number gets bigger, so the shape will grow when the scale factor is greater than one. If the scale factor is less than one, the shape will shrink. Multiplying by 0.5, for example, is going to cut a number in half, so the shape should shrink in that case. Here, it says that the scale factor, right there, the scale factor is 0.7, so I know that's less than one, it's going to make my shape shrink. And sure enough, the triangle is smaller. Um, <clears throat> so the triangle is smaller. And I know that whatever the value here is, it's going to be smaller than its original value back over here. So before I calculate, I know I have, I have to multiply by 0.7. But the most important thing I need to do is figure out what am I multiplying by 0.7. I have to figure out this side that's marked with an X. Which side does it match up with over here? If I match it up with the wrong side, I'm going to get the wrong answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's match up the sides. I see this larger triangle has the shortest side, then it's got a medium length side, and then here's the longest side. So the shortest side I will mark in blue, and that's going to match up with the shortest side on this one. The medium length side, in this case, is marked with a length of 15. So here is the medium length side. That's going to match up with the medium length side on that one. And then the longest side has a length of 19 on this large triangle. That's the unknown side over here. So it, I know now that I'm trying to match up this one with the 19. Uh, it looks like this triangle not only has shrunk, but it has rotated to try to confuse me. But I did not fall for it. I know that X and 19 go together. So I know that I need to take my 19. I'm going to multiply it by 0.7. Sorry about the scratchy marker. And that should tell me the answer to my length of side X right there. And that's really all there is to it. So, and remember, we made a prediction that this needs to be shrinking. When you multiply by a number less than 1, your answer is going to get smaller. So, it's going to be less than 19. So, if I do 19 times 0.7, 7 tenths, I get 13.3 as my new side length. 13.3 is my answer for the length of x. It has shrunk in this dilation has shrunk with it by a scale factor of 0.7. Hopefully that helps. Good luck when you are using scale factors.